Welcome to the Road to Inclusion podcast from the Atlas Alliance. My name is Gagan Shabra. I'm the project manager for inclusion at the Atlas Alliance, and I will be your host. And in this podcast series, we will cover themes such as disability rights, disability inclusion, the empowerment of persons with disabilities, inclusive international development aid, and disability inclusive humanitarian action. Welcome to a new episode of this podcast, Road to Inclusion from the Atlas Alliance. I'm your host, Gagan Shabra, and today we have a very, very, very exciting uh, guest with us, important guest with us, Per Inge Bjergnes. Per Inge Bjergnes is the General Secretary for the Norwegian Association for Blind and Partially Sighted. And before we talk about Per Inge Bjergnes' background and uh, important issues with regards to representation matters, themes linked to Nothing About Us Without Us, the Global Disability Summit, the Disability Rights Movement, I would quickly, quickly describe myself. Right now, I'm wearing a black jumper, I'm wearing a black buttoned-up shirt, I'm wearing a beige jacket, and there is a light blue tinted glasses on my face and Perenge. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. That's so nice. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I just realized that uh, the first uh, episode was with the former minister, Dag Inge Ulstein. So the next has to be with Perenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. So we, we are all super excited to talk to you uh, today uh, and listen to your perspectives. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we often use this phrase uh, in this broad uh, disability rights movement, nothing about us without us. Mm. And we will discuss about that uh, later. And this podcast will will be published on 3rd December, mm. uh, which is the International Day for Persons with Disabilities. Mm. And it's very, very important that you are here representing this important uh, issue with us. So welcome to, uh, to this podcast. And before we go any further, why don't you just quickly, briefly describe yourself and, and tell us who you are and where you come from <laughs> yeah. and a little bit about your bi biography. I will try. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Gargan. So uh, nice to be here. Um, Today I wear a green, light green shirt uh, and jeans, and uh, yeah, I am Norwegian, uh, short, dark hair, <laughs> yeah, and usually I wear uh, dark uh, glasses, uh, but right now I don't use them. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yes. my background, I am... 42 years old. Yeah. Uh, I come from Miesen in Østfold, yeah. um, small town uh, close to the Swedish border. Uh, but right now I live in Oslo. I moved to Oslo one year ago, yeah. uh, right before I started my work as a secretary general. Uh, so um, now I live at Lørn in uh, Oslo with my husband, Louis. And uh, yeah, we have a Nice flat in in, uh, in Oslo and uh, like it there. Uh, and uh, before I um, uh, studied uh, political science at the mm. University of Oslo, um, and I worked a lot with uh, politics. I was a politician for many years uh, mm. in the county council of Østfold, um, and then I worked. Uh, some years with the uh, transport and transport uh, planning mm. uh, before I started in uh, our organization uh, from January this mm. year. Mm. 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 Well, that's a fascinating background and uh, and I would definitely want to explore this question also about the intersectionality of disability <laughs> experience with you, uh, because there in the uh, in your introduction, you talked about Lewis, your mm. husband, and uh, and uh, we will we'll take a deep dive into that. And that's, that is very, very nice to know. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, that you are the General Secretary of the Norwegian Association of the Blind and Partially Sighted, mm. which is one of the largest <laughs> and the oldest disabled people's organization in Norway. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you mind telling our uh, readers or listeners or viewers uh, what it exactly is uh, NABP? Yeah, our organization uh, was grounded uh, more than 120 years ago, uh, the year on 1900. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, we are uh, an organization um, of blind and partially sighted and uh, in our rules it's said that uh, um, blind and partially sighted must be in the leading positions in the organization hmm. both at the national level and the regional level hmm. um, and it has been like that for uh, almost from the beginning mm -hmm. um, and from when it started it was um, mostly because of uh, the situation uh, or the labor market because it was uh, also at that time difficult uh, to get a job when you were blind yeah. and uh, they needed an organization uh, to uh, talk with the government and to fight for their rights yeah. so uh, uh, some questions are still the same <laughs> 120 <laughs> years later even though the society is quite different uh today but uh, yes. some of the challenges uh, are still the same um but we uh, uh grew as an organization and uh, uh of course we um increased also uh, the different uh, things we work with mm. uh so of course, to work with uh, the politics and uh, to try to um, um, yeah uh, improve the situation for for blind people is is important. Mm -hmm. But also we uh, have um, uh, our three centers, Syn uh, or Center, as we mm -hmm. call it, that we have different uh, courses uh, and uh, learning programs mm -hmm. for people are blind or partially sighted um that is very important for, mm -hmm. because if you um as a grown up uh, lose your um, suddenly getting blind or uh, almost blind mm -hmm. uh, you'll need to learn lots of things uh, how to manage your daily life and uh, yes. maybe learn braille mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. learn how to um yeah find the direction when you're walking or how to do even things at home, like making food and uh, yes. yeah. everything is, of course, a challenge in the beginning. So, yeah. so you need yeah, different kind of courses, learning, uh, and most important to, to talk with other people that has been in the same situation and yeah. now manage it and shows that, uh, oh, it's, uh, it's hope I can manage this. Um, because in the beginning, many feel that it, the situation is uh, uh, almost hopeless yeah. and I will never manage. But then they meet other people yeah. that has been through the same. And um, so that's important part of our work uh, yeah. and uh, have different uh, yeah, meetings and uh, ways that people can uh, talk with each other. And, yeah. Uh, both in the, at a local level to mm. to meet uh, uh, often, or also at the national level to um, meet uh, other people and uh, have the opportunity to learn of each other and uh, mm. Mm. to encourage each other. Um, and we have also our uh, international projects. Uh, mm. We are uh, having development uh, projects in different parts of the world, especially in uh, South or Africa and uh, part of Asia. Hmm. Um, we started that in 1978, so we, we have uh, quite lots of experience with that. Wow. Um, and um, yeah, we try uh, to um, help uh, people that are blind or partially sighted, both in Norway and in other parts of the world, because we know that, yes, we have challenges in Norway, but of course the challenges and problems are even bigger for many other people, uh, other places in the world. So yeah, yeah. the solidarity is, perspective is very important for us. <laughs> wow, that was such a uh, such a rich answer, mm -hmm. and there's so much to unpack in this. You know, <laughs> uh, like uh, the, one of the things which you uh, which you mentioned about habilitation and rehabilitation services, mm -hmm. uh, which are provided the peer to peer learning, and this idea that you know, like if you 
suddenly become blind or if you have been losing vision, it's so important to remember or to interact with individuals who have already gone through that journey yes. and to and to realize that you are a part of community. Mm. You're a part of a, a network mm. uh, which uh, from where you could learn and grow together. Yes, that's right. It's, um, very important. And also to remember that we all are individuals because mm. uh, even uh, you have the same uh, problem with your eyes. Uh, mm. Two different people will react in two different ways and, <laughs> and uh, uh, to show respect for that. People need uh, to have their own way to find out uh, how to deal with it. Um, mm. And people have different uh, interests and uh, different knowledges and different experiences. Mm. And, uh, that makes people also handle the situation in different ways. And I Absolutely. grew up with a brother that is also blind. Mm. Um, he's six years older than me. And uh, uh, many times when we grew up, uh, mm. people around us, they... Uh, um, met me like they met my brother but mm. me and my brother we are both blind but else we are very 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 different yeah. <laughs> 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 that's that's a great point, you know. Like we've got to appreciate the diversity mm, uh, exactly. when when it comes to mm. uh, this whole um, uh, group. Because uh, let me let me just throw a few statistics, which for the audience who might uh, not know about it or not know about it, mm. we might all know that there are a billion people with disabilities around the globe, mm. uh, fifteen percent of the global population. But out of this billion people. 285 million are approximately individuals who have visual impairment. Mm. Uh, the th 39 million are individuals who are blind. Mm. And 246 million are those who have a low vision, low vision or like low sight and mm. are partially sighted. Mm. And I think it's, it's a huge group. And like any other group, there's tremendous amount of diversity. Mm. There are tremendous amount of intersections when it mm. comes to uh, issues of race and gender, sexual mm. orientation. Mm. Uh, and, uh, I, and, and I kind of could uh, uh, underscore this point that yes, you and uh, your brother, although you are blind, mm. <laughs> are two different individuals. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and um, for me, I, I don't uh, really um, like to talk so much about the numbers because mm. uh, in some way I think that um, simplify mm. it uh, in one way because uh, even if yeah me and my brother <laughs> we are both blind mm -hmm. but in some situation I will say that my brother he is more able than uh, anyone else mm. and, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, he do many um, uh, things with uh, his uh, hands, uh, like uh, uh, with the uh, cars and uh, houses, he's very handyman. Like yeah. I'm not at all. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, and uh, like me, maybe I am. Uh, yeah, I was quite good at political science. Mm. Could, could uh, read uh, much at the university and manage everything there quite mm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, if you are disabled or uh, are visually impaired or something, it doesn't tell so much who you are and what you manage and what you don't manage. And Absolutely. Uh, to meet people as individuals mm -hmm. uh, and uh, meet their interests, their uh, um, yeah, education, habits, <laughs> yes. meet everyone as a whole person and... Uh, and another perspective is that everyone is in one or other way disabled uh, <laughs> during the life um, because, uh, yeah, as a child, you can't manage everything. You need mm. help from your mm. parents or, mm. or something. When you're getting old, uh, maybe you don't manage everything. You need help from other people. And during your, your life, you, you have some challenges that makes you yeah, need help or can't manage everything. So everyone has um, part of their life that in one way disabled. So so yes. the numbers doesn't tell so much, but of course it's important to remember uh, is many people that uh, are disabled in one or other way. But, mm. 
Oh, that's a fantastic point which you're making uh, that um, uh, which I have often uh, what, during my research or while writing the opinion pieces, I've been talking about the temporarily able-bodiedness mm -hmm. of all of us or what I call is we all are temporarily able-bodied individuals, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, tabbies. Mm -hmm. And um, absolutely, you know, when we're born, we are quite helpless and quite dependent on our parents for our survival. Mm -hmm. And if we are lucky enough to live long enough, there's a high chance mm -hmm. uh, we board the disability the express mm. so so and in the in, in the interlude in between also uh, because of chance accident injury mm. and whatnot there's a uh, visibility could happen mm. uh, impairment could happen so that's why it's so 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 important mm. what you said Peringe, a few moments ago that to treat every individual mm. as an individual mm. uh, for me that's very important and to, to remember the things uh, that we fight for uh, as organizations mm. uh, that is not just for a few people or just not for many people mm. it's for everyone mm. because it could happen to uh, to everyone uh, to uh, be disabled and in in one or another way you will um, need the things we are fighting for um, so uh, and also <laughs> now, um, during uh, Corona period and uh, with so many challenges, uh, we also learned, uh, now I don't remember who said it a few, few days ago, but said that um, uh, nobody is safe before everyone is safe. Mm. And that's, mm. for me, <laughs> some of the uh, same situation for uh, people with disabilities. Uh, that uh, no one is free before everyone is free. And yes. No one is included before everyone is included. Um, and to remember that uh, is Im important for me as a yeah background for everything we we do. No, oh, absolutely. And uh, you know when you talked about this question about. Uh, how there are few issues which could affect everyone. Mm. Uh, one thing which jumps into my mind straight away is the example of uh, electric scooter or spark mm. a <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you, 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 you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Had so, big challenges with that uh, during the last uh, yeah, few years. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So imagine um, uh, we are uh, dr um, we are walking on the sidewalk. Mm. Uh, in Oslo uh, with our white canes and then suddenly we encounter a uh, electric scooter which is very very strategically parked <laughs> in the middle <laughs> just to block us and 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 the interesting thing is this that if you talk to people on the street mm. if you talk to uh, mothers who ha who are pushing the perambulators mm. uh, or if you talk to elderly people or if you talk to uh, individuals who are carrying shopping bags mm. uh, they don't like like these uh -huh. electric scooters being parked mm. in the on the sidewalks so this is a classic example that how something which bothers uh, free movement safe movement of individuals with visual impairment mm. actually affects other wider society mm. and uh, would you want to talk a little bit about uh, what did uh, your organizations uh, do and how did it tackle this issue when it when it popped up yeah, uh, I can say something about that because um, already when uh, we uh, got a law a few years ago that said that uh, that kind of vehicles could use uh, the sidewalks, <laughs> we said that this is a really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> it's it's In dangerous and uh, it will um, make people feel... Uh, not safe uh, when mm. they're walking and uh, yeah and uh, the government said that no we will try this and uh, it wouldn't be so bad as you say but mm. too bad we, we <laughs> at this time we, our perspective was totally right and even maybe it became worse than we expected uh, mm. And uh, so many of our members uh, had problems uh, with that vehicles, and um, uh, many old people. They mm. said that they uh, just stay at home because uh, they are too afraid to walk, mm. uh, and uh, 
yeah, they feel uh, isolated and they, mm. they don't manage their daily life as they did before. So this uh, had a very big impact on, on people's life. Mm. Um, so we uh, talk with uh, politicians, both at a local level and at a national level, mm. uh, at Stortinga yeah, and uh, the government. And um, many people, both politicians and others, uh, in one way agreed with us and could understand the problem. But uh, for a long time, they just said that, oh, uh, yeah, we will try to do something before the next season no. or we mm. will ask the the companies to do it in a better way. Mm. But uh, we said that that is not enough. It will not help us. So yes. step by step, uh, they made uh, stricter rules mm. uh, and they also did in Oslo now, but we would like to have a national um, laws that um, makes uh, that kind of vehicles uh, don't use sidewalks uh, as the rules are in most of the Europe. Uh, so mm. it's especially in in big challenge in, in Norway. Um, yes. Uh, so we hope that uh, we will have a new law maybe during next year that uh, makes uh, them don't use the uh, sidewalk and we can uh, feel more free again. Mm. Absolutely. And this is something uh, which resonates with a very wide audience. Mm. It's not only for uh, individuals who are blind or partially mm. sighted, individuals mm. who are old, uh, who feel who feel scared, but many, many people, many people, uh, they mm. don't like this electric scooters mm. because they are a menace yeah. uh, when it comes to uh, on the sidewalk. They're quite dangerous and quite uh, intimidating. Mm. But yes, like I, I I wish your organization all the best and I hope mm. uh, that a national level uh, legislation could be passed. And this is a classic example that how uh, your organization, blind and partially sighted people were ahead of the curve mm. when it comes to identifying the challenges, mm. the issues, the uh, the perverse effect or the repercussions, negative repercussions mm. uh, coming out of this electric scooters. And then the whole society kind of, there's a consensus which is getting built around it. Yeah, so that's I a think so. And, and also when we talk about, for example, universal design, mm -hmm. uh, it's not only for people with disabilities because everyone will uh, uh, feel that, uh, uh, for example, train stations or mm. uh, public uh, buildings or uh, yeah, everything will be easier if you use universal design. Um, and of course, it will be easier for people who are blind or uh, partially sighted or people with a wheelchair or thing to to use the public transport or uh, the public um, uh, houses and everything but it will help everyone to to make it simpler to to use uh, things with if you have universal design and that's also one example that uh, yeah we fight for it because it's necessary for uh, people with disabilities but hmm. it's good for everyone Absolutely. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right about this, that we have to have a broader approach mm. uh, to so, which resonates with the wider society mm. uh, to bring about a social change. Mm. But uh, if I may ask you something which you said in the beginning of this podcast, mm. you said something which was very interesting. You said about that our organization, the organization of blind and partially sighted people, it has a statute, it has a law or a regulation which says that blind mm. people or people with visual impairments mm. would be those who would be leading. Mm. What do you mean by that? And why was that uh, institutionalized? Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, in a few years, we have um, been an organization for 125 years mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now one historian she is uh, writing a book mm -hmm. about our history mm -hmm. and she tries to find out <laughs> <laughs> from the beginning uh, how uh, how was they um, uh, discussing about it because in the beginning it was a quite big discussion as we mm -hmm. know that uh, could uh, everyone that was uh, in uh, charge of the organization mm. be blind or uh, yeah, visually impaired uh, people? Um, but 
At one uh, stage, they decided that yes, uh, everything, uh, everyone in our, um, uh, yeah, uh, to be elected uh, into positions in the uh, Norges mm -hmm. uh you must be visually impaired, um, mm -hmm. and that's because uh, to work with these things you should know and you should have experience with what kind of challenges uh, you meet uh, and um, we will also use the organization to show that hmm. people with uh, uh, disabilities or uh, visually impaired people can handle this, can yes. have that kind of positions, can mm. do that kind of work in a, a good way and also through that show the society it's uh, possible uh, and uh, give us opportunity to show it yes. in other parts of the society too. So for us it has been important also uh, to show uh, the society around us that it's possible and to, uh, yeah, to be a good example of how we like our society to be to give everyone a chance yes. um but of course w we have services for uh, visually impaired people and to make good decisions about how to develop our services you should have the experience of mm. how it is so mm. that's uh, why our rules say that in our organizations mm. Mm. Yeah, no, I think of how I interpret it is something like this, mm. that for far too long, mm. people who don't have a disability mm. spoke on the behalf of those who have a disability. Yeah, They ended up leading organizations, the quote-unquote non-disabled people, mm. uh, which, were, which were supposed to promote the disability rights, disability inclusion, disability mm. justice. Mm. And at the end of the day, the question is about voice and representation. Mm. And as you rightly said, that we should have avenues wherein we could express unequivocally mm. what we believe in. Mm. We could show, demonstrate to the society that we could be leaders, mm. we could be managers, mm. and we should walk the talk on nothing about us without us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's so important. Yeah. Nothing about us without us. Mm. Yes. Like uh, how... How do you think we could, quote unquote, operationalize this, this slogan? Uh, just to put things into perspective, this is a slogan which mm. was uh, coined or popularized by um, uh, researcher, scholar James Charlton, who wrote a book in 1998 mm. uh, with the same title, Nothing About Us Without Us. Mm. And, and the idea was to, to, to an extent precisely this, that if you want to talk about us, if you want to uh, push our agenda, you have to make sure that you include us. Mm -hmm. You make sure that we are decision makers, mm -hmm. we are counseled, mm -hmm. we are uh, we are participants on the table. Mm. Yeah, and I think this has been important for every group or every people that has been um, uh, has experienced discrimination. Uh, mm -hmm. in uh, different ways uh, mm. uh, according to gender or uh, race or uh, religion or mm. yeah uh, to fight for equal rights uh, you must include the people that uh, has experienced discrimination um, and uh, now I think um, we are in a very important period for uh, the rights for people with uh, disabilities mm -hmm. um, and I, I think uh, more uh, politicians and uh, people in different uh, positions in the world they uh, hear more and more <laughs> about our uh, mm. situation and uh, about our rights and um, mm. know that uh, we have a challenges they they must handle um and i think that it's so important that they also know that they must include us in the decision making mm. if the decisions should be good um mm. and because it, it's um on every 
part of the society because it's according to education, it's according to labor, it's according to services, healthcare, mm -hmm. um, how we plan our cities, uh, mm -hmm. buildings, uh, transport, information. Mm -hmm. um, S -s smartphones and how to use technology. <laughs> yeah, uh, we need to be included in in every part of the the society, and uh, um, our voice uh, needed to uh, be be heard. Um, and and we not not only heard, but we should have power to do something uh, with our own lives. Mm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So we should be able to live a more a autonomous life. We should be yeah. uh, viewed as subjects of rights, as full equal citizens, and yeah. not merely objects of charity or individuals mm. who mm. Uh, who should be taken care by the state. Yes, that's right. And that has been um, a, uh, changing also inside our organizations, because mm. uh, our organization also earlier was more kind of organization that uh, helped people, had services for people. Mm -hmm. But more and more uh, during um, the last period, uh, we make people um, manage to, to uh, take care of their own life, uh, mm. to, to uh, be uh, yeah, responsible, to... Um, do their choices for how do I like to live my life and, mm. and uh, not, no one should tell other people how to, to live their life <laughs> even they are uh, visually impaired or something else um, yes. you, you you need to uh, decide your own way and uh, that is, was a change I think in, in many organizations that worked for uh, people with disabilities and we need mm. the same change in the society and uh, in some ways uh, we, we see that um, uh, it goes in a right uh, direction uh, but uh, not as uh, quick as we <laughs> wish and uh, <laughs> not as uh, every part of the society so we have uh, still big challenges to uh, handle. Mm. Yeah. Oh, in your assessment, what are the three big challenges which per, uh, persons with disabilities in general or blind and vision impaired people in particular encounter in Norway? Mm. And, in, and you have projects in Asia and Africa as well, so you might have some insights about that. Mm. Yeah. Um, when we work with projects uh, in Africa or in mm. the South, um, we have three um, main uh, parts of the projects. Mm -hmm. We work to uh, strengthen the organizations for uh, people or people with, uh, with blind or people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, the second is that we work with uh, education and rehabilitation. And the third is to work with uh, eye health and uh, prevention of blindness. Um, so that's uh, the three most important uh, part of our work in mm -hmm. uh, in Africa and uh, from the beginning uh, it was mostly the health care eye health and uh, prevention of blindness that mm -hmm. was uh, important and uh, more and more of our work is according to the rights uh, and uh, to make uh, people uh, handle their own life with just uh, try to give them tools to to mm. to manage their their daily life and mm. to have a work and to take care of their families mm. but of course the challenges if you suddenly uh, getting blind in in that countries they are much bigger than the challenges we have in Norway even mm. we feel that we still have big challenges here <laughs> here here too um we need to remember that uh, uh if you uh, suddenly getting blind in uh, many poor countries. Um, uh, maybe your whole family uh, getting into um, poverty and mm. uh, you, you are so many things you can't do because you don't have any system around you. No one mm. knows how to to make you manage your, your own life. And mm. uh, uh, so 
so many things we 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 need to to give them um, so they can live good lives in in that regions we are and uh, so important that we have uh, organizations and also nations that uh, have uh, development projects in uh, hmm. every part of that that part of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, absolutely, you're spot on because uh, I would like to accentuate this aspect that uh, what you mentioned about how poverty and disability are so intertwined. Mm. And so like uh, one uh, leads to the other. Uh, if you are poor, then there's a high chance that you can be malnourished, you can have starvation, you can uh, you might not get vaccination mm. and the rest. And then uh, that might lead to poor health care, that might lead to uh, disability. And the moment you mm. become disabled, mm. uh, blind uh, or, you know, or physical, mm. uh, uh, disabilities or uh, mental health conditions, uh, there's a high chance that you would be uh, not able to conclude education, mm. get into employment, and you might not be able to have access to uh, resources, and then you eventually become poor. So uh, in developing countries, poor countries, you're spot on. Mm. Uh, you're hitting the nail on the head that uh, uh, poverty is a major um, uh, consequence and cause which can lead to disability. Mm. Yes, and that is a major challenge which has to be addressed through organizations like yours. Mm. Yeah. So we have lots of experience with that kind of projects during mm. more than 40 years and we have uh, cooperation with other organizations mm. and uh, we see that uh, yeah, we can make a difference uh, and uh, help uh, people and, and help them to, to um, uh, have a better life and mm. that they can manage their own life. They can mm. have a small uh, business uh, or mm. they can uh, have education and uh, yeah, things that they thought were impossible. But uh, uh, for even quite small amount of money, we we can uh, change their their situation in a very mm. very important and good way and. It's important that um, uh, countries like Norway um, uh, has development projects with uh, inclusion as an important part. Uh, mm. um, we, we hope that also the new uh, government they will uh, continue the important work with the inclusion also in the uh, development. No, absolutely. Uh, because if we uh, want to realize the the goal of leaving no one behind, mm. uh, which is a major um, goal for the sustainability development goals, mm. if you want to realize that uh, agenda, we have to ensure that persons with disabilities who are the most poor, uh, the most marginalized, at times the most excluded and most oppressed people in societies, uh, they, uh, their interests are not forgotten. Mm. Yeah, so, That's so important. Yeah, mm. you, you, you're absolutely right. And uh, if, if I may go a little back, uh, because you said that 1978, that's when you started the international uh, projects. Mm. Uh, and um, so that's almost 43 years circa, mm. uh, which your organization has been doing international projects. Mm. Uh, what's what is, what's your reflection about the disability rights movement in Norway mm -hmm. and beyond when it comes to solidarity issues? Like, do you see it gain momentum? Where, where it, what's the trajectory you're seeing it go? Yeah, uh, um, I think that we, we have seen a big change during the maybe last century or two two centuries um, mm. uh, and now we have the uh, uh, UN uh, CDPR um, that CRPD CRPD oh, <laughs> thank you yeah. oh. uh, just to go just to give a quick uh, note mm. UN CRPD is mm. the United Nation Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities the That's only exactly. Convention of 21st century mm. signed by 182 countries. Mm. Yes, please. Perfect. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> because, because otherwise the audience might be like, oh, what, what was that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that a code language? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you, you can explain. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that uh, 
change the game. Mm, mm. <laughs> uh, and uh, we see it in, in Norway um, that uh, to fight for rights is uh, quite different now than before we yeah. have that um, convention. Mm. And also in uh, our projects uh, and uh, in the solidarity. Uh, as you said uh, before, we, we were talking about charity and uh, just uh, to give people services. Mm. Uh, but now uh, the perspective changed and uh, is more like uh, fighting for the rights and how can we mm. manage uh, people fulfill their rights in different mm. parts of the, the world. So I think that we, we now see a quite different uh, situation uh, just according to yeah, a few years ago. So um, I think that has been a very important change and will help us uh, with the uh, yeah, to, to reach an inclusion society mm. and uh, mm. Mm. Yeah. so no I, you, you're just spot on because you know CRPD was um, uh, ratified or signed uh, by many countries uh, starting from 2006 mm. so we're talking about a decade and a half like mm. 15 years time yeah. and suddenly the lens has shifted mm. and suddenly the focus is now on rights-based approach mm viewing, understanding uh, people with disabilities as those who are people first, those who are human beings, who have human rights mm. and who uh, should uh, pursue human flourishing and human freedoms like any other individual. Mm. Yeah, so so you are you're absolutely uh, spot on uh, with that. Uh, in, uh, like there's something which is very interesting about your background, which uh, which I underscored in the beginning of the podcast, mm -hmm. which I would like to, again, uh, bring it back. Um, I, I read this piece wherein you said, dare to be yourself, mm. and which talked about the intersectional nature mm. of uh, your life mm. and uh, and how you cohabit these two spaces. Could you could you talk a little bit about uh, when somebody asked you the question, how could you be gay <laughs> if you are blind? <laughs> what does that mean? How, how, how do you respond to that in Norway? And, uh, please uh, educate people, yes. I don't know. It was a really weird uh, situation. <laughs> um, but uh, it shows that People, they have their picture of about or uh, yeah, impression about how is it to be gay, how is it to be blind, mm. how, how is it to be, uh, we always um, uh, put uh, some uh, words on other people and then we uh, <laughs> think, okay, uh, he or she has to be like this or has to be like that. And, uh, when you mix two of those pictures together <laughs> you make it difficult <laughs> absolutely you know it's it, it's it's very easy to put the labels and the categories and, yeah. and to put people into boxes and just say you are supposed to be only gay yeah how could you be what yeah did you say that you're blind as well yeah. now you are in two boxes how could you <laughs> how dare you sir <laughs> You make it so difficult <laughs> yeah, for me to interpret the reality. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Uh, uh, um, so, yeah, and and when I grew up, hmm. uh, of course, uh, yeah, when I was teenager and um, realized I was gay, it was hmm. quite difficult to, because uh, when you are a teenager, at least when I was a teenager, I, I like to be. Uh, as the, the people around me, mm. the, uh, we all I compared with uh, my friends yes. and uh, other people at school, mm. and like to be a part of the group. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I was blind uh, and all, already felt that uh, yeah, I, I I couldn't be like the others, mm. and then also realized I was gay. Uh, yeah, it was a period quite tough but um then i uh, started thinking that okay that's just how i am i now i have to just tell people and see how mm. 
how they take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I told some friends mm. and, uh, and they said, uh, fine, okay, nice. Uh, and uh, asked me more about it and then mm -hmm. I could relax and okay, maybe it's not so dangerous that I felt yeah. before. Um, uh, so I, I met so many nice people, uh, both my friends and family and everyone mm. uh, met me in a very, very good way. Uh, mm. And that's very important because um, when you are a teenager or uh, starting your own life, you, mm. you need uh, to meet good people and you it could harm a lot if you meet negativity or... Absolutely. Uh, Yes. Uh, yeah. So I was uh, lucky and um, uh, soon I, I just uh, think, thought that, yeah, that's how I am and who I am uh, yeah. and didn't yeah. think so much about it because, uh, as you said, um, <laughs> that's kind of boxes. Uh, it's not so interesting when you live with it. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, we are uh, individuals, I'm mm. an individual, and uh, yeah, I like to work with uh, politics, and I mm. study political mm. science, mm. I like to uh, mm. uh, sing and play the guitar, I like uh, reading, interesting in literature, mm -hmm. like to be out with the friends, yes. have coffee, or... Of course. Um, and, and that's Are my life. And uh, uh, so uh, then the, uh, what you call me, if you call me blind or call me gay, that is not so interesting. Of course I mm. am, but, but yes. I am so much more. <laughs> Absolutely. That, 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 that's the core message because when you were talking about, you know, uh, literature, songs, uh, movies and, uh, and uh, coffee, mm. I, I, for a moment I thought that you are just being a human being. Uh, how, how, is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and it's so important to uh, to uh, uh, to us uh, uh, reiterate the point which you made that how often you know persons with disabilities who are from minority backgrounds, mm -hmm. uh, be it racial minority, ethnic minorities, sexual orientation minorities, mm -hmm. uh, uh, linguistic minorities, they encounter this uh, incredible double multiple <laughs> burden, burden of you know discrimination or prejudice and 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 they complicate the the reality and mm. they often uh, uh because of the because we all have this uh, desire to conform to be accepted by the society mm. uh, you know we do we don't want to always stand out mm. uh, and it's so important to kind of blend mm. uh, with society and uh, when you have these different minority uh, backgrounds intersecting mm -hmm. um, it can be a bit of an interesting ride mm. yeah mm. So, but, but, but I'm, I'm so happy that you are able to navigate that and you got a lot of support from your mm. family and friends and, mm. and people around you and you seem a person who has uh, who is um, uh, yeah, who cherishes individual freedom mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, uh, I, I I wanted to ask you, since we're going to publish this on 3rd December, this podcast, mm. what is your organization doing on that day mm. and what, how do you plan to uh, celebrate it, commemorate it and, and express a sense of solidarity mm. uh, with the people around the world uh, who have a disability, both visible and invisible? Yeah. I like to say I, I celebrate like I celebrate every day to fight for our rights. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like that celebration. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have some um, uh, meetings and conferences with other organizations mm. uh, on the 3rd of, of December mm. uh, and especially one about uh, CRPD. Did I say it right now? <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely right. That's perfect. Here you win your million dollars. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, to have a conference about how to uh, include it in uh, Norwegian uh, law. Um, yeah. uh, so, uh, and maybe that's the most important uh, thing right now hmm. in in, uh, in Norway. Hmm. Um, and. Hmm. Uh, also, we will uh, use uh, 3rd of December for planning a global disability summit in, in February uh, and uh, to um, 
yeah, discuss what kind uh, or uh, um, yeah, what sh should we expect from from Norway and the Norwegian mm. government uh, according to Global Disability Summit uh, and. Uh, yeah, that's a really important question and uh, CRPD yeah. will be a part of it. And I think uh, inclusive education will be uh, important uh, too. Well, we will see what will come out of um, this, but we will, uh, during the 3rd December, this, uh, we will uh, try to uh, uh, yeah, decide what, what kind of exploitation should we have to Norwegian government. Yeah. Absolutely, because I think this is the day, what you said rightly, Peringe, uh, that uh, uh, your organization uh, has to kind of put the Norwegian government's feet to the fire mm. uh, and, and make them accountable. Uh, tell them that what are you doing when it comes to uh, incorporating the CRPD into mm. the Norwegian law mm. and, and the best way to do it is through cross disability collaboration yes. right like to uh, because uh, united we stand mm. right mm. and um, we build a strong disability rights movement together mm. yes so that that is wonderful yeah and uh, and also the global disability summit point i hope that uh, more traction is given to that mm. and the norwegian government uh, takes it uh, 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 to the next level mm. because it's going to happen in february yes yeah and uh Norway as a host, as a global disability summit, uh, should show that uh, they go in front for uh, mm. the rights for uh, people with disabilities. So, yeah, they should lead, lead by example. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Now, so okay. Now we are in the uh, in the in the tail end uh, uh, of this, and this is from uh, uh, one blind person to the other <laughs> blind person. I'm not going to let you leave this studio uh, because you mentioned about singing <laughs> and guitar playing. Mm -hmm. Quick piece of advice about music for us, yes. uh, all the listeners, viewers, uh, and those who would uh, read the transcripts. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of what kind of music uh, uh, um, uh, should they listen to? We have, we are ta we're talking about 30th of November right now. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. perhaps you could sing it as well. Uh, uh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. Um, I have... Um, been uh, singing and playing the guitar uh, since I was, um, yeah, my mom said that for in the beginning, my guitar was bigger than me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was quite fun uh, to yeah. try to um, play the guitar, <laughs> yes. uh, but the music has always been a very important part of my uh, life. Mm. Um, and uh, I uh, listen to uh, different kinds of music, uh, some pop music mm. and some jazz and some mm. classic uh, music uh, and uh, one recommendation uh, one recommendation <laughs> Come on, call. no pressure <laughs> no pressure yeah, no pressure yeah um <laughs> Yeah, right now I usually uh, listen to quite old uh, yeah. um, music, and mm. and uh, yeah, the biggest group during all time is Beatles, of course. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I hope you're not going to say while my guitar gently weeps. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be a little bit more positive than that, please. A more positive. Uh, here comes the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. As it gets darker and colder in Norway, uh, yeah. here it comes the sun. Here That's comes a the sun. Or uh, yeah, but I like uh, Elton John, mm. Eric Clapton, Queen. Um, oh. Yeah, um, and also I. Uh, Make some uh, new songs myself. So oh, yeah. I, mm, so yeah. I like to compose. Do, do you want to hum a little bit of your tune? <laughs> um, I know that it's destructive not to know how to understand what you don't see. Yeah, something like that. Wow, that was really good. <laughs> and it was about this thing about like, oh, you, you don't know, you're afraid, you're ignorant, you, you, you're scared of uh, um, of the fact that you might be ignorant. Mm -hmm. so absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That is a brilliant uh, way to end the whole thing. Uh, I really, really appreciate your insights. And as you rightly said that uh, uh, we are stronger together, mm -hmm. uh, we should build 
build a much more robust grassroots cross disability uh, movement together and, and argue for disability rights and disability inclusion. And 3rd December should be celebrated, not just only on 3rd December, uh, but across the entire year. Peringe, it was a pleasure to have you. I'm going to try to do my best to shake your hand and, yeah. you go, and let's try if that works out. And yes, here it is. We, 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 <laughs> two two bad people shaking hands. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hope that you found this conversation insightful, engaging, enlightening, and a little bit entertaining. And I hope you get a chance to follow the next episodes.